Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Anne, and I am a um, staff person here at the Stitch and Den. I've been here for about oh, seven or eight months now, and I just love it here. Um, I want to welcome you. We're getting started a few minutes earlier. I'm just wondering if people who are on with us right now have any comments or anything that they would like to say about what they've liked about today's demos, um, what they would like to see in the future, too, because we are open to suggestions. We would love to know what you like, um, what you want more information about, what you would like classes about, what would you like to be learning? And so this is a chance for you to share with us so that we have the capacity to move forward with what your wants and needs are as um, we develop programs and get things into the shop. So I think it's a great opportunity for you to share with what is important to you and what your learning needs are. So today I'm gonna to be talking a little bit about foundation paper piecing. Um, I did a presentation on our first demo day using freezer paper, foundation paper piecing, and I did a Christmas truth block. This time I'm going to be doing a pineapple block and I have to share a funny story and Paula is here. And so she is going to hear about this and hopefully she won't be angry with me for saying this, but she came to me and asked me to do something for demo day, um, another foundation paper piecing project. And I said off the top of my head, oh, I'll do a pineapple block. And so she thought that I would be foundation paper piecing an actual pineapple, not recognizing that there is a very beautiful traditional block in quilting called the pineapple block. And so I'm sorry today, today to tell you that I will not be paper piecing a pineapple. <laughs> today I am going to be paper piecing and showing you how to paper piece a pineapple block. But one of the things I wanted to let you know, just because Paula's um, interpretation of a pineapple block got me to thinking about what is the history of the pineapple block. And for those of you who are quilters and who have done different uh, blocks, basically the pineapple block is a variation of the log cabin. Can you see it? I can show you the pineapple you switch. Yeah, that would okay. be great. There we go. All right, so this is my placemat. This is my example of the pineapple block. And so if you can see this, you can kind of see where you would see a log cabin variation. So, and it's also a variation of the courthouse steps. And so any of you who have made those types of blocks, you know what's involved and you're kind of going around to make the block. This one, the pineapple block, I when I first, did, I was scared to make this block. I had never wanted to do it. I thought it was too complicated. There was no way I was gonna be able to do this without it becoming wonky. And then, I and then I discovered last year that I could do this because I took, I actually did a sew along where I ended up making a pineapple block that was four and a half inches big. And so, and it was paper piece. There was no way you could do that traditionally pieced. And so I thought, Okay, I can do this and I found some patterns out there that I'm going to share with you that have the blocks in a six inch and in an eight inch, si eight inch size. And so those will be shared with you so that you can take these blocks and make this your own. But I want to teach you how to do this. So what I want to first start with is kind of the um, placement of fabric in a pineapple block. I have done in this the same piecing all through each block. And so it makes a very uniform kind of pattern for you. You can do this scrappy. You can do it with two colors. You can um, change the placement of the colors to totally change the look of the block. So I wanted to show that to you really quickly. So I did some coloring. And so this is one where when you look at the block, you have basically columns going this way, and this way, and columns going this way and this way. So this is actually the opposite of what I did in my placemat here. So you can see where the colors are going out this way. And this is a coloring sheet that I did that shows how I pieced my block here. And so you can see how it looks different. And when you are matching up your blocks when you're sewing them together, you can see how you get this square here and it's on point. And if you do this with this block, these colors are gonna be in there versus the white. 
And so it totally changes the look of how the block will be for you. And it's yes. beautiful either way. Um, I just want to make sure people understand that you can do so many things with this block and it will be a beautiful quilt. And if you've ever had the chance to go on to Pinterest or just look up pineapple block and pineapple block quilts, they are the most stunning quilts you will see. Um, I'm probably, I consider myself probably a more modern keister quilter. So I have brighter colors, but if you um, are more traditional this is a very traditional block and you will see some beautiful beautiful things out there that will make a beautiful quilt for you and so you can make these colors and placements all your own and your quilt will look unique so that gives you a little idea about how color placement is important kind of the um, um, placement of things for this when you look at a pineapple block you don't look at really necessarily in rows i look at it as as it in rounds so in my block here, you have your center, and then you have a round of this color piece, and then you have a round of white, and then you have a round of the um, teal, and then a round of the pink, and another round of white, and you just keep building out. And so, um, so rather than saying you're doing a row, um, you're kind of doing that round. And that's where you can get creative as well by doing something more scrappy, where you could have um, all of these um, columns here could be a little bit different um, as you're moving out, but you may be consistent within blo one block, but change it in the next block. So it's a lo lots of opportunities to be creative with this. So in getting ready for this, I'm gonna be honest with you, making these blocks takes a long time. There are 41 pieces in this block. And so um, I am not gonna, I am not going to sugarcoat this. Each block takes a very long time. Um, this happens to be the six inch block. Um, and this has actually not been trimmed down yet. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that. So it looks a little, it's a little bit bigger than the six inch block. But this is the other colorway with the colors on the edges here on the triangles. And so all of the big pieces that I'm going to show you are going to be showing the colorway for this. Because once I get these all done and talking to you about this, I'm gonna finish all of, my, all of my blocks so I can make another place map. So, um, so I have different um, stages of blocks that I'm gonna show you as we move forward. Um, one of the, th so I wanted to show you some of the things that we're gonna to need to kind of get going. Um, the first thing you're gonna need is the pattern. Um, we will have that available to the website. I actually found these patterns, the six inch and the eight inch block through a website that they were provided for free. Um, they were on generation, generation quilt patterns. And so, um, and they're, they're out there for free. She's made them out there and it's perfect patterns for you to be able to print up. But what you're really gonna need once you get that pattern link is you're gonna need a printer. And so you have to print out the blocks. We don't, um, it's not eight. And you have to print out a block for each one that you're gonna make. So you have to be prepared that you might be using a lot of printer paper. And that's the thing with this is you don't need any special paper. I just use regular printer paper and it works just fine. And so once you print out a block, um, the first thing you, before you print it is you want to make sure that you're printing at 100%. Um, if you're not printing at 100%, your block may not be printing out to the right size. And you may find that out the hard way, which is what I've done with other paper piecing projects, is I did a paper piecing project where I did a whole row and it was supposed to be 72 inches with like seven or eight different blocks to it. And what I had printed out was too small. So I had like two inches on each side where I had to fill in the gaps. <laughs> and so it worked, I figured it out, but it's really important once you have printed it out that you take a ruler. Some, of, some blocks will have a one inch guideline and you can measure to make sure it's a one inch, but if not, you can take your ruler and you can measure from this block from here to here. So this, these two edges here are the end edges of the block. So printer, printing paper, and you're ready to get started. The other things that you're gonna need are gonna be um, a sewing machine. Everybody's gonna pretty much wanna do this on a sewing machine. Um, and you want an open toe presser foot because you're gonna be wanting to see your needle placement when you're doing foundation paper piecing. Um, you're gonna need fabric. Um, I used um, quarter yard cuts for what I used here, um, but these are fat quarters. 
of what I use pretty much for the whole project here. Um, and it's, you can do whatever you want. You can pull different fabrics, what colors you like, how you wanna have variations if you wanna do two colors or just a gradation of a certain color will just be beautiful. And like I said, you can get scrappy as well. And you can get scrappy in the wide area or in the um, lighter area. You can use um, low volume fabrics. You can use um, a darker color that will complement what you have as far as your other colors in there. You're also going to need, um, oh, the other things that I found, and I didn't think about this, but we have these beautiful new fabrics that came in and a jelly roll is absolutely perfect for this because you are able to get variations of color. They go together. You can make a beautiful kind of scrappy look, but it's all gonna coordinate. And the other thing that happens with this is this is a two and a half inch block or strip. And I'm gonna talk with you about like with my six, six inch block, what I cut for as far as strips width sizes. Um, so, but a jelly roll would look work perfectly as well as a um, layer cake. And so these are, and this is another one we just got in. And, and it's the same as the jelly roll that we have here but it, you can see the actual fabrics in this that are just absolutely beautiful and it would make it beautiful quilts as well. So you have your, your fabric. The next important thing is a ruler so that you can cut your strips because I cut strips of fabric and I pretty much have done them all strip wise, width wise are gonna be um, for the six inch block that I did they are um, one and three eighths inches. One of the things, if you are a quilter, ever made a quilt, you have to be very exact when you're cutting your blocks or your fabric for your blocks. When you're paper piecing, you don't have to be quite as exact. And so what I've done, and I can show you a layout that I have here, is um, these are all the different fabrics I have, but I cut everything to one and, a, one and three eighths. Um, a one and a quarter might have worked. I like cutting my fabric big. I'd rather have too much fabric and not have to worry about um, screwing up my block because I don't have enough fabric as I'm moving forward and cutting and trimming. Um, but um, so you could, probably in this one for the six inch block that I did, I probably could have bought, gotten by with one and a quarter, but I decided one and three eighths gave me a little more wiggle room. So what I tell people is when they're starting to, cut fabric and you're not sure what size, is you can use your block for a template. You can cut off a piece of this, a piece of this, a piece of this, all the way down. And you can kind of measure that and decide, okay, this one needs to be two inches for me, which is what I did for my first one. Um, but maybe you wanna go two and three quarters for this one so you have enough fabric. There's, there's not a definitive, size that you have to cut for this is what you're comfortable with, but I always go big. So, but cutting the blocks apart and being able to put it down on top of your fabric just to get an idea of how big you wanna make it, you at least want a quarter inch around at the very least um, of, of each of these tip when you're cutting your fabric. But this kind of gives you an idea of, as you're working out on the block, um, I did, the middle block at two inches square. And that's huge for what this block is. But I like to have lots of room because that first block, that first placement is really important because that's how you build out. And if you don't build out straight, you're gonna be unhappy. Um, and then um, just basically going out and at the very end, you're gonna cut a square and then you're gonna cut it in, in on the diagonal because that's gonna be your corner pieces. And so what I did with that is I cut like a three and three quarter inch square and cut it in half. It's plenty big. You don't need to get any, um, it gives you a lot of overhang so that when you square up the block, you're gonna have plenty of fabric so you don't run short with that. So this is this one is a layout of um, one of the fabric directions that I did. That's the first one, this, this one here. So. When you're cutting your fabric, you can cut little, you can make little piles. So this is my middle square. This is my first round, second round, third, fourth, and ongoing. This is my fabric layout for this one. And so this one, starting the same color in the middle, 
but you're starting with the white and then you're going to the color and then white then color and then you end up with this on the end. So that's at your corner pieces here. So when you're making an, a, when you're planning your block, you just have to look at which direction do you want to go? Where do you want your pieces to come out? All right, so what else do you need? Um, so you cut your strips and you kind of figured out how big you want each of your strips and you have your piles in place for round one, round two, round three, round four. What you're gonna see on the block, and this is the eight inch block, so it's a little easier to see, is you see the numbers. You're gonna be folding this back like this. And you're gonna follow this and then I fold it forward because you're gonna to need to be able to kind of manipulate that fold. You're gonna follow the numbers. It's really important you follow the numbers, otherwise you're gonna screw up your blocks. So you're gonna have your centerpiece, then you go to block. So it's gonna line up with number two. Then you're gonna to go to number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you follow the numbers. That's, that's the most important part of this and any paper piecing is that you follow the numbers because if you don't, your block will not turn out correctly. Your fabric placement will be off. But it's important that you pre-fold all of this. And I think I have an example of all of this here. Um, so this is a pre-folded one and this is my first one I'm gonna show you. But it is gonna be, it's 41 folds. You got 41 pieces, you got 41 pieces, you got 41 folds. And so it's important that you do all of that before you even start sewing on the block. So you got your pattern, you've been folding, other pieces of things, other um, things that you're gonna need, you're gonna need a rotary cutter, not just to cut your strips, but when you're squaring up or trimming each um, piece as you're adding it to the block. What I had actually just learned recently, and I read about this preparing for this, was <laughs> people recommended that you have two rotary cutters, one for just your fabric and one for when you're cutting through the paper. And so um, I just learned that. So I have to put that into effect and figure that out because otherwise I'll be like Brendan going, why is my rotary cutter so <laughs> dull and it's not working right? But anyway, so you want a rotary cutter, two rotary cutters actually. Um, or you can just change out your blades and put them back and forth, but two rotary cutters would probably work better. The most important piece of equipment that you're gonna need as well is your add a quarter ruler. And I'm gonna show you how we use that as we're trimming after we sew. Um, the other thing I use is a um, fabric glue um, pen. This is actually a little bit of glue you can see at the end. And I only use this for the first piece because it's getting that first piece in place. Um, it's really important. After that, I use pins. I don't like to use a whole lot of glue, but sometimes it's having that little dot of glue to hold that first piece in place. Then I pin. Some people don't pin. Um, I find I'm more comfortable pinning my fabric in place before I sew it. Um, it keeps it in place. I get a better um, sew line. And then I um, wanna make sure that um, everything stays lined up. Because if I don't pin, sometimes things will get a little wonky when I sew. Um, I use my seam ripper a lot. <laughs> and so just know it's okay. And you can seam rip when you're doing paper piecing. It's possible to do it, but avoiding it is best. But it, you can sew, if you have to strip something out, you can do that and it works out okay. Um, as long as you don't have to rip out the same seams three or four times because the paper won't hold together. Um, but I, and that's the other reason I cut fabric a little longer because I do like to piece. And so what I'm going to get into in just a minute is showing you how I do that. So, so we're going to get started with how we piece the block together. I'm going to move this out of the way. So finding that first piece and you have that, this is my first piece right here is my yellow piece. And so I have pretty much placed where I want it. Um, I put the white piece on top because that's where it's gonna go. That first piece that you have is always going to be right side up. 
you're going to always put, you're always going to sew right sides together, but you're going to want that first piece is always going to be right side up. And what you want to do is you want to make sure things are placed in the right position on your piece of paper here. And so it's in the center. You can't see it as well in the back, but you can kind of see where the fold lines are. And it's going to, you can kind of tell a little bit from where the fold lines are that you are in the right place. But what then I do as well is I go turn it back over. And that's why you either glue it or pin it in place. And then you fold this back and you're looking at this and say, yeah, that's pretty close to a quarter inch. I'm not going to do any, I'm not going to move it around or futz with it. That's going to be fine. I'm going to, I'm going to leave that there. Then I am going to place my piece number two on top, line it up. And then normally what I would do is I would pin from here. I put two pins in and then I would put another one over here. There we go. I've got to pin this here. And so, and I put it down further. So when you're sewing, you know, people go always are, I can't run over the pins with my sewing machine needle. It'll break something, don't do it. So I try and put it down below here. It's not gonna hit the sew line, but it holds it in place. So that way, when I flip this over, I'm going to be taking this to my machine and I am going to be sewing from this point on line two. Can you see that okay? From line two to there. So you're just sewing right here to here. And then um, you want to back stitch a little bit or a locking stitch. If you go a little beyond, if you go a little on this side, a little on this side with your sew line, it's okay because you're going to just, every time you pull it back, it'll just rip that. Um, it won't rip out the thread, but it'll rip the paper a little bit when you fold it back. And that's fine. It's not a big deal. You, it's, it's perfectly okay. But then you're going to get your sew line here, and then it's then you're done with that. You're going to go let me skip here, number two. So you can see on here, I've sewed from here to here. And, don't, and that's as far as you need to go. You don't need to go all the way up to here or all the way up to here. You just need to go within that little area there, sewing directly on the line. And so that's why it's very important to have an open toe foot on your sewing machine so that you can see that needle placement. It doesn't have to be a quarter inch seam. You don't want a quarter inch seam because you're eventually at some point in time, you're gonna need it. But when you're putting these pieces together, you just wanna make sure your, your needle is lining up on that line. And so, here it is, it's all sewed right there. I'm gonna pull out my pins. And then I finger press it. You're gonna eventually need your ironing board and your iron, but I'm gonna finger press that first. Cause then I'm gonna put on, um, and, and, if, and in this situation, I could fold this back and see with my quarter inch ruler, do I need to trim it? And it's really right the quarter inch so I don't need to trim this one so it's folded back but then I'm going to go to this side so we're going to line number three so we've gone center which is number one number two number three and so guess what this piece because I told you I cut it really big is way too big so it needs to be trimmed back so you're folding it back on line number three, and that's why it's important for you to be looking at how, that's why folding all your paper ahead of time is really important. So you're gonna fold it back on line number two, line number three, you're gonna take your add a quarter ruler, and then you're gonna take your rotary cutter and trim it. And there you've got your quarter inch. So our, you know, that quarter inch rule when you're doing quilting is still in effect when you're doing paper piecing. So then, I would be adding piece number three, and which would be another white one, and it would lay right on top. And then it would be um, um, turned over, and it would be sewed. Let me show you. So, next one. So I have sewed on piece number three. So you can see it here. And I folded it out. So. We've got center, piece number two, piece number three. 
So we're going to piece number four. So you turn it over, you look at where's piece number four, right here. So you're gonna fold your paper back again. You're gonna take that out a quarter and you're gonna trim it. And in this situation um, with the pineapple is everything's going to be opposites. Two and three, four and five, six and seven. So you can trim, so I'm at, I'm at trim number four. I can go ahead and still trim number five at the same time. You may not be able to do that with all paper piecing, but with this block and the way it's laid out, you can do it at this, you can do four and five at this point in time. So I'm gonna trim four and five. So that's ready to go to have piece number four and piece number five placed onto here. So I would place piece number four onto here, right side together. So always keep that in mind, right side together. I would pin it and then I would sew it on, turn it over and sew it on line four. Then I would add piece number five on this side, flip it over, I'd pin it down, flip it over and sew it. And so this is what it looks like after you've got four pieces on. Doesn't look really pretty yet, but it grows out. And one of the things that, and actually to let you know, this piece block, I had been folding blocks and this was an eight inch piece block. And so this one's a little bit bigger, but it's just the same example for you. Um, but I wanna show you what happens next because we're gonna be going at an angle, um, but you're not sewing at an angle on any of your pieces. You're folding the paper and then it will be on a straight line and you won't have to worry about it. So we've done center, two, three, four, five. Next number is number six, right? <laughs> so you're gonna fold back on line number six right here. And then you're gonna take your add a quarter ruler and cut. And then you can also go into number seven. and cut it. And so that's, just, that's what it's gonna look like. And so I brought a couple of the next two pieces because we're getting into the flower in a color, um, a, a, a different fabric here. And so guess what? This is the wrong side. This is up, right side up. You wanna place it right sides together, okay? Does that make sense? And then, I would pin it on both sides and then I would flip it over and then I would be pinned and then I would be sewing on line six. And then once it was sewed, I would pull it, pull out the pins and um, fold it back. And then I would put on piece seven, pin it, fold it, sew it on the line and then you're done. And then you fold it back. And then you, when you get to this point, then you're gonna fold back your papers to do another trim. So you're gonna keep building like that. It's not difficult. You just gotta keep in mind on your place on the pattern, what numbers you're on and just keep going and following the numbers. And when you get two sides done, you need to make sure you're trimming it before you're adding. So you're always looking to fold it back and add a quarter. So this is what it looks like after we have the um, next round on. And so again, we're gonna, the next round is, so we're gonna trim this for pieces. So in case you're getting lost, we're up to page. So we're gonna be trimming for piece nine, or excuse me, piece 10 and piece 11. And so trimming here again. And you can see how you end up with lots of little bitty scraps, uh, but it's okay. And so you have piece 10 and piece 11. And um, so what color is gonna be going up in here now? It's gonna be white. So you're on a white round. And so you're gonna add a piece here and a piece here. And so when you go to, that um, 
to this sheet. And if you have everything laid out, you're going to see that you're, you're heading into the white. So you're going to have a white round. And then we're going to get into this color for the, so it, it keeps working its way out. And so I would be piecing on, um, putting on a piece of white here and then a piece of white here and sewing. And then um, finger pressing it out. We're actually taking it to the iron board at that point in time. And then after it's ironed out, then going from here, 12 and 13, and using my add a quarter ruler. So I hope that's making sense. You just keep moving out like that. Um, and so this is the next round, adding on the white pieces. And um, one of the things that looks like, and I think you'll see this as we move forward here, is um, when a lot of people look at sewing a, a block and, and um, materials together, they're looking at everything meeting up, everything lining up and you sewing to the edge of it. This doesn't look right. It looks weird, um, but it's right because this piece here is right, even though it's not to the end of here. And this is okay, it's not to the end of here because when you fold it back at the angle, you're catching that fabric again. But one of the things that I saw that freaked me out when I was doing this the first time was, you see how some of this, this fabric is hanging over here, but it's not that on the quarter inch line. That's okay, because that's, you're not sewing there and there. You're only sewing in here. And so it's okay. So don't freak out. It's all fine. Um, you just want to make sure you have the quarter inch on the area where you're going to be sewing in which would be at this line right here. And so I kind of put some markings here where you can kind of see. So this is, this is basically where the sew line ends right here. And so you can see that little dot there and a little one there. And so as long as the piece of fabric that you're putting on there falls within that, you're going to be fine. So don't get too worried about it not matching up. Let's see. Where am I at? <laughs> um, so the one thing that I wanted to show with you on this one is that you can really see where things don't line up very well. It's, it looks like there's no way this is going to come together. I, when you look at this, it's like, no way, no way. How can this work? And um, But it does. It really does come together because you're folding back on, ang on angles. You're um, hitting all the corners for everything to be pieced together. It is not going to fall apart on you. And so if you were to cut this, and let me show you, this is where I kind of went a little further. So if you just give it a little tug, and don't worry about it if you've gone over. It just pulls out of there and it's fine. And then we're getting to the other side. And once again, I went over a little bit. Just give it a little tug. And then we'll see again when you add on these pieces. that right sides together, it's going to fall within those lines. You can see the full lines right there. It's going to be fine. And the same on this side, right sides together and you sew on it and it falls within those lines. Even though it looks like, whoa, how can that work? Um, you've got all this gap here. It's all good. And so what I usually try to do when, it's, when I'm working on this, since you're not lining up from end to end here, it's just trying to make sure you're centering, centering it okay. Don't, don't be lining it up at the side. You want to center it in the middle of this round. So, you know, come out just fine. All right. So, sorry about that. That's my phone. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> Okay. It'll go off. <laughs> so we have a question. Okay. Um, do you have any thoughts or suggestions on how to quilt the apple quilt or wall hanging? Um, yes. Um, I, I struggled with that question myself. Um, so when I did my placemat, 
just to give you an idea how I kept it really basic is I quilted it around here and up here on all of these and then over here and down there and down there. And then I quilted around each round, not every round, but like every, let's see, this round and this round. So it kind of gave you a, I don't know if you can see the design on the back, but I've got the square here. And then I've got this here, where I, and then this on the back. And so I just quilted in the ditch. And so I've seen other people's um, quiltings where they've done um, just straight line quilting across. Um, they may have done a little bit of a variation in that where they did an inch um, and then um, they did a skinnier strip here in, and um, an inch and a skinnier strip and just kind of kept it um, um, as just straight line quilting. Um, Debbie, who is our long armor person here, probably has some beautiful ideas as to what can be done on a long arm. But when I'm quilting on my machine at home, I try to do straight line types of things. It's easier for me to be consistent with that. I still have a long arm. I would take those white diamonds and I would do something really decorative in there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Or you could also do circular, like a swirl on top of that and it would be like, Right, and have some focus with that too. And so, and it kind of depends on how you decided to build out your blocks. If you're kind of keeping, um, if you're doing a more scrappy look and each, each of these corners could be a different color, you may decide you want to do something that you know, has a different focus or you could do, um, I mean, and if, you're, if you do some free motion quilting on your own domestic machine, you could do um, just a little, you know, a little flower or something in there just to kind of have something different in each of those squares too. So there's lots of ways to be creative, but when you look at it, it's like, how do you do anything with this? It's really, it's really something that can be very um, challenging to kind of figure out a good design and what you're comfortable doing. And so um, for the placemat, I kept it simple, straight lines, but around um, just not each one of these rounds, but just a couple of them and then with these in here too. And um, in that, you know, you just want to, in this situation, I just wanted to have it stabilized. Um, so we're, we're getting to that last block where you're going to have your corners. And so, like I said, I cut these blocks really pretty big just because I don't want to run out of room when I'm trimming it up. And so, no, you don't place it this way. This is wrong. <laughs> you want it right sides together. And it's going to stick out a little bit. Your, your corners on your triangles are going to stick out a little bit, and that's okay. Um, you're just going to go ahead then and sew, sew on that line right there. So you get, you get the finished block, which um, I'll pull out again for you. So after all of that work, 41 pieces later, um, and you're going back and forth to the ironing board a lot. You're um, um, pinning a lot. It, you know, the sewing is just teeny tiny little bits. It's really easy, um, but there's a lot of up and down if you're going to your sewing, you know, going from your sewing machine to your ironing board, um, unless you've used Brenda's wonderful idea of using a TV table and making an ironing board tap next to your sewing space. Um, and there are um, other things that are out there that have um, where you could possibly put like a pressing mat or something next to your sewing machine where you would be able to just press without having to get up and down but you get your steps in if you're getting up and down um, to go to the sewing machine um, but this is the finished block it is not trimmed correctly yet because this is really really important if you're using this pattern if you download it see the dark line here that is the finish line when you sewed this is basically what line you would be sewing on when you are um, done. But I don't know if you can see it on here. You can't, you can see just this little dotted line here. That's the quarter inch. You have to always cut out from this dark line a quarter of an inch. And I don't usually use that dotted line as my cutting point. I take my ruler and I line it up on the dark line. So if you can kind of see where the dark line is right here, my dotted line here on the dark line, 
And then there's my quarter inch beyond that. And that's how I would trim out the block because I don't trust that um, each of these is consistently the right quarter inch. Um, on the eight inch block, you will see that when it prints out, it does not show up. Um, that, that dotted line will not show up um, because it's too big. And so you just have the eight inch block. And so you want to just make sure that you always have enough fabric that goes beyond a quarter inch so that when you trim up the block, you're not going to be making the block too small. So it's just important to make sure that that works. And the other thing that you want to make sure of, like with this, these pieces, these white pieces here that I used, and I told you I used the one and three eighths, and that was wide enough, but you always want to make sure when you're getting to this last round that this is a little bit wider um, and you're going to be trim, even though you're going to trim it, you might want to make sure that last round for the white blocks is maybe just a little bit wider and wet for you so that you have enough fabric to cover this whole piece of paper before you trim it. But this is where I would cut it from as I've lined it up. This is the dark line. There's the quarter inch beyond that. And then you just cut it. And there, first line done, and then you just go around the block and cut off a quarter of an inch. Um, or down to not cut off a quarter of an inch, but cut off so that you have a quarter of an inch left. So the other tips I wanted to tell you about with making these, and when I did this before, when I've made other paper piecing um, items, um, the first time I did something that was multiple pieces of a paper piecing, I um, took all the paper out before I um, sewed things together. It's a lot easier to leave your paper in. Um, so in this situation, if I had two blocks done, I would be lining up the two blocks on top of each other, right sides together, and then just sewing right along that line and, um, and keeping the paper in there. So it just helps line everything up so that things meet without any problems. And that's what I did here and here and here and here, and then up here too. And so it makes it easier to match up things so that you have um, consistent seams. What I've also learned to do is, you see this little point here and down here, the edge of each block is sometimes I have taken a straight pin. And if I have another block um, that's right sides together with me, I will stick it through into the other block and make sure everything lines up. So it just kind of helps you to make sure that your seams are gonna line up a little more efficiently as well. So that is kind of my quick overview of how to make a pineapple block. I think that there's so many people who have such creative ideas who can make this block their own. Um, and believe me, the quilts that are out there that can be made with this block are truly amazing. Um, so if there's questions, if there's anything else that I can um, address as far as um, how to help you move forward with paper piecing, please let me know. Um, I cannot imagine trying to make this block without paper piecing. I can't imagine making it a traditional way because it would really just, I couldn't do it, <laughs> um, but it's a lot of fun and it's, um, it's worth it. It's really worth the time and energy to make something this beautiful. So. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Uh, oh, wait, I have a question. Okay. What's the best way to get the paper off? Oh, I was going to show you that. Do you want me to go down here again? Yeah, if you could just real quick. Okay. Give me a minute here. It says on my little sticky note, demonstrate trimming and, and removing paper. <laughs> so anyway, usually um, what I would do is I would start. Oh, there we go. So, um, so this would be my first piece I would remove. I, I start from the outside moving in. So you just fold it back. And if, and if you have, and I don't know if I mentioned this, you really want to make sure that you reduce your stitch length when you are doing paper piecing. So if your normal stitch length when you're sewing is 2.5, which is I think the default setting for a lot of sewing machines, you want, and this is really one of the most important parts, especially when you're taking off the paper, is you want to reduce it. And I think I reduced mine down to 1.6. I have a Bernina, so everybody's sewing machine's a little bit different um, as far as the stitch length, but you really want, anywhere from a 1.8 to 1.6 stitch length because it makes pulling out the paper a whole lot easier for you to do. And so in this situation, I would go around and just fold it back. 
and then it comes off really easy. And if you get little pieces left there, they may eventually come out or you can take a tweezers to pull them out. Um, and then you've got this piece right here. You can, I have not done that just because um, I'm always concerned especially when I'm printing on my on my using my printer if my ink is going to run um, I can't speak for anybody else's printers but I would just be concerned about possibility of um, wetting the ink and it running onto the fabric um, but then I'm just kind of keep moving around so get each corner off and and go from there and then further down this way. You go around the edge, you just kind of give it a little tug. If it doesn't all come at once, you just keep going. <laughs> and this, this shorter stitch length makes a huge deal. It, it, it makes a huge difference. And so it just comes off really easy when you have that shorter stitch length. It doesn't pull the stitches out, doesn't weaken your fabric and um, it works just fine. So I hope that answers that question. Thank you. If anyone else has any questions, they're welcome to ask. I don't see any more, but thank you, Anne. Thank you, everybody. Do you want to let everyone know that you're just going to take a few minutes and get set up for our favorite things? Yes. Um, so Jenny, Jenny's coming back with me. We're going to talk about our favorite things. We have some things in the shop we'd love to share with you um, and, and talk about a few of the events coming up still in the months. So we'll see you in a few minutes. Okay. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. And if you want to use... I just so I want to thank everyone for being on uh, this today and I know lots of people have popped on and off and while the girls are getting set up for our next thing our favorite things I just thought if you guys wouldn't would mind wanting to give some feedback on demo day you could unmute and give us your feedback and let us know uh, what you'd like to see like um, Anne had you start thinking about that so we could take a list of the things you'd like to see in the future and uh, we have some ladies in the shop watching too. They can chime in as well. So I'd love to get some feedback on today, what you thought about it and um, if you could see and all that good stuff. So you'll have to unmute or you could type it in the chat either way. It was great. Hi, Hi. Oh, I'm sorry, my sound was off. Okay, I think I'm going to try to get my view here where I can see people. How are you? Anyway, that was great. I learned so much. I love the variety that you did. It was just incredible. Well, it's a nice way to showcase everyone's um, yeah. talents in the shop. Everyone has so many talents and and things that it's really nice way to showcase everyone. I love seeing all your faces. So come on if you'd like on your camera. It's nice to know who you guys are too, because I just know a few of you and now I know more of you. So that's yeah. Fun. So thank you very much. So I thought of a few things while the girls were doing or demonstrating. Um, I wrote down some lists. I have to actually ask people if they would be interested in doing it. But if you guys thought of some things. Uh, oh, let's, oh, good. Okay, Heather says, love the demos. Maybe tie in kits we can purchase and follow along last time we did the wreath. Yes, yeah, so we did do a wreath for the kit, um, a kit for the wreath, I mean, but yeah, um, we can look at doing that. Our system is not 
the most friendly if they're doing kits like that, but we can, we're, we're trying to learn more and more every time we do things like this. So we will work on doing some kits. That was a great idea. Yeah, the pillow would have been a good kit because that was unusual things that we don't, might not necessarily have. Yeah, and um, well, and I put all the links in for the individual uh, products and in the upcoming newsletters in the next couple of weeks, we'll make sure we kind of give, um, like if we have patterns for things, we will list that out for you and um, you guys can download those, those things from there and I have all the links to all the supplies. So I just wanna remind you, don't forget today is double points day. So you're, uh, anything you purchase today um, via calling the shop or uh, online, we, you would earn double points and we will be awarding those next week. Um, so it's anything from uh, today, it has to be dated in our system on February 20th. And let's see, um, any other feedback? You can, please feel free to unmute. Allison, you have some, some feedback? It was very good, thank you. There was, I thought, oh, I'll just go on for one thing that I thought was interesting, and I ended up staying all day. <laughs> I know, it's addicting. It was very nice of you to do it for free, actually, because, it, I don't know, you felt like you got a bargain. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Larry, yours was good. Hi, Alice. <laughs> they all were very good, thank you. So, unfortunately, I messed up, and I didn't get the needle point. Um, presentation recorded. It's always like the first one we kind of we, we kind of mess up. But I did get the other ones recorded, and we will be sending out links for you to view in the future because I know some of you asked that. Um, and also, uh, Tisa had a really nice um, comment. I love your comment, Tisa. And she says, "I think these demo days give us all an opportunity to experience exposure to a variety of it, and if." of expressive crafts. So thank you for that comment, Tisa. I really appreciate it. If anyone has, um, you know, has a comment that we could do, that'd be great. So the girls are getting set up. So we'll be back, we'll be on in a few minutes with our favorite things. I think this is one of um, the best things about the shop. I don't know if I can keep up with links. Um, I will do my best. If you guys have specific questions on links that you want that you didn't see in there, I will um, make sure you ask before we sign off so I can get the girls to give me um, specifics on that. So uh, they're rounding up their things right now. Paula, uh, can you hear me? It's Bev. Yes, hi Bev. Um, I don't know what I did, but I just have thumbnails of everyone and um, because I printed off a pattern. So I just wanted to tell you, I really liked your variety that you had today. It was really very interesting.